All right, Alex Jones, this is just kind of after the show. I, I want, because I know this was a topic that's going to take a little bit longer to unpack. You were just talking about sort of demonic apparitions and uh, what they do in Silicon Valley. Now, here's one thing I will say. I have not had any experience with, with DMT or uh, like hallucinogenic drugs. Um, but I do know that Joe Rogan and Eddie Bravo have talked about this. And it's fascinating to me that they've talked about having shared hallucinations. Uh, what you don't really get when it's a, hallucina a hallucination, right? If it's in your mind, if it's just something that you're, you know, deep there in your subconscious or your subelum is conjuring up, um, you wouldn't all see the same thing. And this is something that other people have talked about in taking these drugs. Here's kind of, and this is what I thought was very interesting. I think there were some, some misconnections sometimes with, with you and Eddie and, and Joe a little bit, what specifically once the pot came out. Uh, but I did think what was interesting that you were bringing up was talking about kind of this historical opening of a door and as a Christian, I do believe this. Certainly, if you're taking all kinds of hallucinogenic drugs, you're opening a door and distancing yourself from God where you might be um, more prone to, let's call it, demonic or evil influence. Is that a relatively accurate kind of interpretation? That is exactly what I was trying to say. I've, I, I don't take DMT. I've, I've not taken that. I've never taken ayahuasca. And I've talked to hundreds of people. It's the total rage for like 15 years where I live in Austin. And a lot of these are doctors, they're scientists, and they go, yeah, we were down in Peru, or we were down in Costa Rica, or we were down in Belize, and there was 20 of us, there was 50 of us, there was 100 of us, and we saw the spaceship land, and the aliens walk out, and we all saw the same aliens, and they all, and I'm going, listen, but, but, but the doctor goes, this medical doctor, I know, he goes, but I think that's just the chemical. And I'm like, no, dude, you don't all see the same thing. It lowers the veil the Bible talks about, where you can see your eyes, see a lot more than just visible light. They're part of your brain. Uh -huh. And so God has given us blinders so that we can operate the third dimension and not go crazy seeing all the other stuff going on around us in other dimensions. And so that's really what this comes down to. And San Francisco and the you know, micro-dosing LSD uh, elites and, and, and all of them, you, know, you see these CEOs on TV and they're in, under hot lights and you can't even see their eyes. It's nothing but pupils. Right. They are obsessed with this, and when I was a kid growing up, uh, my parents had some friends that were research scientists out in San Francisco, and they came to visit once. So I'm like seven, eight years old at the dinner table hearing about government research projects where instead of trying to go into space, they're like trying to contact, and how they were having government people take huge amounts of drugs to contact the clockwork elves. So I heard about that, and I, and I, and I talked about it over a decade ago, and people researched it and found Terrence McKenna and Timothy Leary talking about it. And basically, they look like gray aliens, except they wear little elf hats, little green outfits, and that's who you talk to at least level one taking the drugs. And and, and, and and again, I know dozens and dozens and dozens of people that go to ayahuasca and DMT cults because they're all seeing and interacting with the same thing. It might be a 200-foot tall praying mantis. It might be a giant demon. It might be a bunch of little gray aliens. Well, either our brains are all psychic and are sneaking up with somebody Mm -hmm. And then one leader in, in the group's causing a hallucination. Maybe that's happening. Or we're breaking through and something real is happening. Biblically, you read about it. The Bible says, do not go to the sorcerers and take pharmakia. And then, you know, the symbol of the grinder and the, and the bowl means drugs. Right. Because, the, because that's what the magicians in every culture would, would, would grind up hallucinogens, take them, and they go, the gods say build a pyramid or, 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 or build an altar and throw babies into it. Whether it was the Babylonians or whether it was the... Uh, you know, uh, 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 earlier Egyptians, or whether it was the Druids, or whether it was the Aztecs. Are you going to go back to the, Bac the Bacchnillians, the parties that they would have? That's where debauchery comes from. A lot of people don't realize this. The term debauchery comes from the Bacchnillians, the parties that they would have, where they would they were drug induced, where people would come out of a, a pile, a human orgy pile, missing a limb. Um, the idea that that sort of low and, and Joe Rogan is talking about this. This is why I did think this was an interesting topic, and I did think that maybe Joe and Eddie can't necessarily um, explore it as deeply since they, they do partake a little bit more. That's not a condemnation on their choices. I just think they may be uh, somewhat uncomfortable with this idea. When you do lower... And let's be clear. Let's be clear. You read about uh, Nero. Yes. And, and people, he would dress up like a werewolf. This is in the Roman histories. And have a kid tied up to a pole and run in with a, with a wolf skin on his back and kill a kid. The, the, exactly. These elites take drugs... Like, like voodoo to try to interface with something evil. So an Eddie Bravo, a Joe Rogan, they're nice guys. So they go and it's a little alien saying, I'm your friend, I'm your spirit guide, come visit me more. But people that get deeper into it, the spirit guide, it's like the Bible says, leads you somewhere very, very bad. And again, why do we think aliens are going to come from space? 
they're going to come from another dimension. Again, I agree. They're not aliens. They've always been with us, and it's demonic. And listen, you can search engine this. We have human-animal hybrids now. We have, we have uh, babies that have been genetically edited. Uh, we have world government. I mean, it's all here, and I'm not saying I even have the answers. Right. All I'm saying is the establishment is obsessed with communicating via pharmacia drugs with other entities, just like in every history book and every culture they always were. Right. And I, I do think that's important for people to note that, um, listen, I know they'll say, well, Christians believe that God told them this. Okay, absolutely. But the difference is if you look at a lot of pagan cultures and like the, some of the cultures that you just mentioned, uh, they all say, well, God told me this. And usually there's some kind of a drug or chemically induced uh, influence when you look at the great acts of evil and barbarism. Even talking because about it's that lower you level. Exactly. It's a lower dimension. You access the devil through drugs and jacking with what God already gave us. But, but they, they know through you know, higher levels, you know, chemicals are released in the brain. Uh, you know, during prayer, during emotional moments, you're higher with God. That's when you get love and grace and the universe, and it's all good. But you, you get into the occult, all of it's bad. None of it's good. Right. Um, and, and I know Joe and Eddie have talked about lowering your inhibitions quite a bit, you know, even if it's just marijuana as a good thing. Uh, and in a certain... There's a component to that that I, that I probably agree with. Sometimes people might be a little bit uptight. Listen, it's why, you know, the Bible says that uh, wine makes for, uh, was it uh, a warm heart? Good, brings good, I don't know, good cheer, cheery spirit. I don't know, I'm very tired. Yeah, of Jesus it. turned the water into wine. He didn't turn it into grape juice. Right, yes, exactly. Well, it's very important to note, especially when you understand modern uh, fermentation techniques that they wouldn't have had back then. The wine would have keep, from, uh, keep it would have kept fermenting until um, someone was drinking it. But uh, there's specifically a verse about, you know, wine makes uh, for, I don't know the exact verse. Uh, we'll have to get Gerald back in here about it bringing a good cheer, a warm heart, warm spirit, but it does praise wine. And again, it wouldn't really praise wine in that sense if it were grape juice. There is a value to a... Well, I think it's all in moderation. The point yes. is wine doesn't make you see demons. No, ex exactly. There's a, my point is there's value in a mild social lubricant that's very different from changing the way your brain functions to the point where you're not able to make the same kinds of decisions, even though wine well, a little what, bit is fine, but drunkenness would be closer. It, exactly. It's, it's like Avatar, the movie Avatar. They believe they're taking drugs whether it's voodoo or black magic or any of this, so that something else can come in and run you. Right. And, and that's what this is, is you're giving yourself over to something else and you're being influenced by a interdimensional, off-world, spiritual, whatever you want to call it, thing that wants to kill, steal, and destroy. I mean, you read the Bible and then you see what people, the experiences they have on ayahuasca and DMT, it is satanic. And so that's why, you know, I like Joey's a nice guy. He's like, hey, you should take DMT. And I'm like, no freaking way man it's not even a fear-based thing it's the losing control and then and then like i'm in a damn room with a 200 foot praying mantis i was talking to one of the crew members and 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 he, he took it about a year ago and he was in this room with a 200 foot praying mantis for like 10 years it felt like telling him submit to me that sounds like I the mean, mist yeah it sounds it absolutely sound terrible fun to me no it doesn't sound very fun to me i did notice you talking with with eddie bravo and he seemed he because he used to be more of a ufo guy and he did say yes. no I don't, I don't think they're coming i think they're traveling through dimensions and maybe they're i think at one point maybe they're coming from below he he seemed as though he was more open to your point of view on, on this and by the way i'm not taking any particular sides here or saying that i agree with you 100 percent, joe or eddie but is there kind of has there, have there been some off uh air conversations with eddie where you're maybe witnessing a little bit I mean, I think Eddie overall is a Christian, and I and I think Joe's coming along, and I have had a lot of off-air conversations with those guys. But I mean, I think Joe's really a genuine guy who wants to get along with everybody, and that's how I he kind of got sucked in and was being nice to the corporate establishment, and then he saw the giant backlash to it, and that kind of got him back. So he did a good job, you know. You know, uh, I, I, I guess on Thursday or was it Wednesday, whatever. It was, this was Tuesday. Days all fly by me. This was Tuesday of this week. Uh, confronting them. So I'm just glad. I don't think those guys are bad guys. I think they're good guys. Uh, but yeah, I've been having arguments with Eddie about all this because like jet airplanes are real. Science is real. They say that I said the moon landing never happened. I never said that. I, we were just willing to have astronauts die back then. We're not willing to have astronauts die today. Mm -hmm. And there was a secret military operation where a lot of them did die. People like Neil Armstrong, you know, who, 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 who was a test pilot, the X-15 and other things, there were other guys that died in secret missions to pave the way for the public missions. And so they, and so they go, oh, Jones says the moon landing's fake, and then they never show what I said, or you know, all these things I didn't say, but notice so when you, I get into you all You do believe we've we landed on the moon? Oh, yeah. Well, Stephen, 90% of what they say I said is like, I'll say, Hillary Clinton is personally responsible for murdering children in Syria by funding the Arab Spring. 
where men take children and murder them and torture them or sell their body parts. And I'm reading news articles. Right. And then Megyn Kelly edited it on Fox News and said that I said in a pizza place they were murdering kids in a basement. Right. I mean, it, it, it's it, it's just next level how they lie. And, well, I was so just well, I just want to clarify for our listeners. You do believe that we landed on the moon. Uh, I just want to make sure that everyone is clear. And I will say this because I, I do, and like you talked about with your father uh, working at UT, uh, I believe your, your dad was a scientist, correct? Yes. Um, my grandfather was a, a colonel in the Air Force, actually. Would have made general if he had a college degree. He trained all the fighter pilots, basically, who worked for the Air Force, would have had to have been trained by my grandfather. He was out of Michigan. And, um, you know, my, my dad used to have astronauts over. For, for dinner, right? This, they would run in the same circles. People of, of, at a very, you know, at a certain military rank, it's very common. And of course, a lot of those uh, fighter pilots would go on to, to work for NASA. So uh, sometimes personal experience does inform a worldview. It's hard to communicate that though sometimes because other people haven't had that same experience. And this is one thing I wanted to, one thing I wanted to ask you. You talked about on Joe Rogan's show quite a bit. This is just sort of a personal conversation here. I'm glad that we're, we're, we're doing this as an extended version. Um, you talked about sort of the psychosis that comes in with seeing a lot of these conspiracies, seeing them play out, and then maybe at one point you were looking for conspiracies in too many places because you had seen the corruption. And I think that's, that, that, that's fair. And you brought up um, the syphilis in uh, I believe, uh, Guatemala, Peru. I think you brought up Peru, but they brought up a source for Guatemala, which, yeah, this is terrible. Hillary Clinton did apologize for that. And it seems unfathomable uh, for Americans to, to understand some of these things. that Exactly. And done. so once you see 10 or 15 times that criminals in government, mad scientists do bad things, you start projecting the pattern, and I, and I only say this because it's true. Uh -huh. because, I mean, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, I kind of got where so much stuff was fake. I thought, well, this is fake. Well, that's fake. No, that's just where they had it organized. Most people in government aren't bad. They're good on average. So, so I, I, I began to realize it was like a psychosis where everything was a conspiracy. Everything was staged. And then I would see the world I wanted to see through that. I'm just being honest about it. Uh -huh. And I really learned that because some of my listeners, they would then project onto me stuff that I knew wasn't true. And they were so sure that I was Bill Hicks or they were so sure that I was covering up Sandy Hook once I said I thought it happened. Yeah. You know, it, it's just, it's like, like once you kind of get like, but isn't that the media and the government's fault and that they lie so much, they've been caught lying so much that once they've been caught, you can't blame people anymore. I mean, if I lied to my kids all the time and then I told them the truth about something, I said, hey, you got a new bicycle out there in the yard or I got you a new motorcycle or I, you know, I got you a new skateboard. Mm -hmm. And I lied to them 50 times. There was never a skateboard out there. And they would finally say, no, dad, I don't believe it, even though there was a brand new skateboard or bicycle out there. So at a certain point, the psychosis is what is real? And I think somebody like Eddie Bravo has just gone to the other extreme where I'm like, hey, I'll hire a ship. We'll go find that the earth, you know, that the worth, that the earth, the worth, that the earth is round. Yeah. And. And a certain, and he just says, "Oh no, it's it's flat. I'm not going to look into it." Well, so at me, a certain point, he's kind of like gone, you know. Because you just brought up the Bill Hicks thing, and I, I got to say, it's a very entertaining conspiracy. You do look striking like Bill Hicks. Like you, if someone were to say that you were <laughs> related, I would say, oh, "Okay, I believe it." For example, if you were like a brother or an uncle. But here's the thing: of course, I don't believe in that conspiracy. Let me be really clear. But the fact that I'm you the just gay clone of Bill Hicks. Right. I am the gay clone. But the fact that you just addressed it, you know that people are going to go nuts in the comment section saying that's just more proof that he's clearly Bill Hicks, right? You know, you've experienced this now. Listen, I'm in restaurants like six or seven times and people go, hey, Bill, hey, Bill. Right. And it's kind of like asking Dan Rather, what's the frequency? And when you finally turn around because someone's yelling, hey, Bill, they go, I knew it. Right. Yeah, exactly. And you're. Now, are you, like, ah, but no, are, dude. are you ever concerned since now you've experienced it, that you've maybe done that in the past with a conspiracy where you've sort of seen confirmation bias where someone's trying to say, no, no, this isn't true. And maybe you did that. Yeah, like that's that. what it is. It's confirmation bias because you've seen Operation Northwoods and Gladio and Gulf of Tonkin and blah, blah, blah. And then you see a Smollett. I have more people walk on the street and go, well, look at Jesse Smollett. That was staged. You shouldn't have backed off on Sandy Hook. Well, I never even quote. I, I always just questioned. I wasn't the guy that first brought up Sandy Hook. I questioned it. I, I thought I said I thought it happened. That made them sue me. It's like, oh, we got him now. He says it's real. He must have lied earlier. But but like Jesse Smollett, like he, we're li I mean, how many of these hate crimes are fake? So then yep. when there's a real hate crime, if I question it, am I saying hate crimes don't happen? No. But it's like babies in incubators to get us in the Iraq war. They knew it was a lie. They had a PR firm. So if there was more babies thrown out of incubators, I would say, is this staged? Then it may turn out it's real in a future war. And, and then I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, but I had to question. See yeah. see how it kind of, I, I say it's a psychosis. It's a psychosis when our authority figures lie to us over and over and over again. Then we start not knowing what's true. 
Right. I, 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 yeah, I understand that. And I would, I would ask this, uh, as when I was watching your segment, uh, segment, your show, the whole segment with, particularly when Eddie Bravo came out. So I, that's why I'm saying segment. Yes, in my Eddie mind, Bravo. It, was, it was a little bit different, right? It took a bit of a different direction. Um, for example, you brought up syphilis, Guatemala, Peru, you bring up, uh, you know, um, you brought up a few different issues that are obviously uh, true that we would. They have didn't know the governor of Virginia wants to kill babies after they're born. Well, no, that was a miscommunication. He was trying to sort of uh, be facetious there, and I think that you didn't understand that Eddie Bravo was being facetious. No, saying, I know he was later, but I mean, taking Joe didn't know, and I'm not, I'm not knocking Joe for that. I think it's normal to not believe we're killing babies after they're born. Yeah, well, I, we've done change my mind on abortion, and most people don't believe it when I tell them what abortion actually is. And then most people who watch the change my mind don't believe that every single person disagreed with me. Once we brought out the fetal chart, if they are pro-choice today, they go, uh, "We have to support abortion." Every single one, with the exception of two, ever. All no, the I've seen your videos, like 10 million views. That's what I'm saying. That's why they want to shut you down. You're reasonable. You're showing them facts. They cannot stand us talking to them. Well, hold on a second. I want, to, I want to get back to your to... point. We're getting down a rabbit hole. Because this was the point I wanted to bring up. Um, for example, you started getting in the rabbit hole of Nazis and like we talked about, sort of clockwork elves. And yes, all very interesting uh, issues. But for me, and this is why I haven't really uh, delved into a lot of conspiracies. And I have the luxury of not doing that because I'm late night host. This is more comedy. But it's because when I look at all these conspiracies, I go, well, hold on a second. We don't need a conspiracy to prove that socialism, that communism, that socialist dictatorships have murdered hundreds of millions of people. We don't need a conspiracy to show that the biggest fright right now, you know, you look at Venezuela and you, then you look at people here in the United States government who go, well, you know what? They just didn't do it right. We supported Chavez before, but we can do better yeah, than AOC, Venezuela with socialism. AOC That's, will not decry it. Right. Exactly. To me, I go, well, I want to I want to keep my powder dry for those issues that I see as super pivotal that are out in plain sight. Do you ever do you ever have any regrets that maybe people kind of lumped you uh, off, uh, cut you, roped you off as nothing but a conspiracy guy when I know that you've also talked about these other sort of macro issues? Well, that's exactly what's going on. Is it's easy when you're in the air four hours a day. Because I've learned, I used to do satire because it's fun, mm -hmm. and I used to like do devil's advocate. I, I don't do it now because they take it out of context, right? And they edit it together. Like my show's been video for 15 years, but notice most of the stuff you'll see on national television, it's audio, right? Because they're editing it. It's it's obvious when it's jump cuts on video. So I'm not even defending myself. I've said some things that are wrong. Uh, you know, I've gone overboard sometimes. I, I've certainly learned a lot as I've gotten older, and especially since I've been kind of put through the paces of the whole conspiracy world uh, and people not believing anything. But but absolutely, uh, most of what I cover and what I do is right out of the news, just like you do. I go, oh, look, you know, Rand Paul says, Afghan war, end it, pay for all soldiers and a victory bonus. I mean, most of what I do is just objectively, here's an Infowars.com story. Dozens arrested for erecting anti-migrant Christian cross in Greece. Government announces it's hurtful to Muslims, arrest everyone. You know, that's dangerous. That That's a real story linked to the government making its own announcement saying, don't you Christians try doing that. So 95% of what I do is already cut and dry, real information. And I can't even get people to admit what's going on. Like, like, like you just said, socialism within 10 years wrecks every country, creates collapse, total nightmares, communism even worse. Do we have to s test it again? Right. And, and so a lot of this is prima facie. It's on its face, and it's like, how do we deal with this? So what happened with me is that you ask. Hillary looked at one of her biggest opponents, one of the biggest supporters of Trump. They said, this guy's got a very colorful past, a lot of stuff we can take out of context. You know, for my own entertainment, I go crazy on air at least once a day. Let's, let's go get this colorful person. Let's edit it out of context and make it Trump. Mm -hmm. Then Trump won. So then they believe their own propaganda, had shows like Homeland and shows on Comedy Central about me and built me into Godzilla coming out of the ocean against Tokyo. And so now two and a half years later, they keep blasting me with tanks and missiles and everything, trying to make me go away. And it's like, they just keep building and building and building. The truth is we're bigger and more successful than we've ever been, Stephen. And, right. and the thing is they won't stop. They've got the, the tanks and the laser beams hitting me. And like, well, I, it, it's, I, I'm not Godzilla. Well, I, I ask you that because you say we're bigger, more successful than ever. But I, I did hear you say on Joe Rogan show that once they figured out iTunes, that that really devastated you. So, um, well, do you I mean, I did feel iTunes. Yeah, but but like exactly, one door closes, another, another one door opens. Oh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, the, it's kind of like it's kind of like putting toothpaste back in a tube. Yes, they did a lot of things that for a month hit us really hard, but then it totally grew over here. It's kind of like putting a genie back in the bottle. Yeah, because you can't really put toothpaste back in the tube. It's probably not the best analogy. And I'm not up here trying to say, oh, I'm great. No, I'm so successful. 
I'm simply saying they don't even get what they're doing. Right. Because it's, it's, it, it, it's like Twitter said, Alex Jones is banned for life. I mean, if I was a child kidnapper, they wouldn't say for life most of the time. Right. So, so, but now they're like, oh, a road to, to redemption. They want to terrify people that if you don't do what we say, and if you talk bad about the radical Muslims, you're banned for life. And you better not have Alex Jones on. I mean, I love Joe to death, and he had the courage to have me on. They were, like, nervous when I was going on and the countdown that they'd be banned because they had me on. And I just said, Joe, Hollywood and Big Texas sinking ship. Why do you even care? And he goes, no, you're right. I don't care. He goes, I wasn't selling out to these folks. I just get busy with life and don't want conflict. But you're right. It's caused more conflict, not having you on and not going after these people. I'm going to do it. I feel, and I talked to Joe the other day. He goes, I feel so good. He goes, I'm going to tear the hell out of Twitter. He goes, he goes, watch, but just don't announce it yet. And he feels good now. And he's on cloud nine. He's being himself, the Joe I knew. And but why, but all he, of said, us he said to, to Tim Poole, he said, I'm very liberal. The only issue I disagree with liberals on is the second amendment. So, because Tim Poole sort of sarcastically said, you're basically a socialist, Joe. I mean, you're just more liberal. And Joe said, yeah, I'm very liberal except on the second amendment. Um, I, in my interactions with him, that hasn't been the case. Certainly the First Amendment, I wouldn't consider him liberal unless he's maybe sort of loosely defining class. Yeah, I would liberal. call Joe a libertarian, and I think he's trying to live out in L.A., he's trying to get along with him. Uh, but, I mean, Joe likes guns. He likes bows. So he's like, well, wait, I'm a good guy. Why can't I? Like, a cop can have a gun, but I can't. Mm -hmm. I'm not a criminal. Why can't I have a gun? I mean, I would call Joe a libertarian and a really smart guy, but he's a father, you know. He's, he's pushing 60, and, you know, he wants to just get along, and I get that. Yeah. But he now gets, dude, you can't just get along. Your audience isn't just going to let you sit there and play patty cake with Jack Dorsey. It's not happening. So now he sees the great feedback he's gotten. He's, he's not like a leaf in the wind, but he now gets, but people didn't hate him. Yeah. They just want him to grow a pair like you've done. Like, I'm not kissing your ass, Stephen, but it's true. You're one of the few people, other than like a Mark Dice, who did not completely throw me under the bus when I got banned. Most other conservatives like pissed on my grave, said, "Oh yeah, he's bad. Oh, don't ban us." Well, let me okay. So let me little, let me bring this up because I will say something, that's, and I don't want this to get heated here. But um, I know that you were like, "Well, why didn't you have me on after?" First off, our, our our booking contact doesn't work with you anymore. But do you ever maybe regret sort of going to war with a lot of conservatives? So there was one point where I, I will say I was like, "Ah." I don't want to have Alex on right now because you said something about me working for Ben Shapiro on your show, which is not true. And I assume now you were shooting from the hip. But, you know, that's the kind of thing that can can kind of rub people the wrong way where sometimes it's like, well, hold on a second. No, I agree. And here, here's the problem. I don't want to say I have psychosis all the time. But you're on air all the time. You're irritated. And later I hear stuff and I go, why did I say that? But that's not true. Right. And it's almost like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I'm, I was not being honest on Joe about it. Sure. And as I've gotten older, I've gotten so confident. Like, used to, I was worried about stuff. And now I don't have a governor. And I'm trying to get a governor, Stephen. Because uh -huh. now, it, it, I don't know, you're not as old as I am, but wait till you're like 45. Or, I've been through, even. I mean, it, here's the problem. The stress never got me down. It made me go crazy. All right. the attacks, all the lies. I became kind of like a crazy crocodile that just started snapping at people. I love your show. I've always told people I love your show. Thanks. And if I said something mean, I don't even remember saying that. No, I apologize. It wasn't, it wasn't mean, and I, that's why I do, I do want to make sure that I clarify. Yeah, we certainly didn't piss in your grave, and we talked about it quite a bit. I said on air, I said, listen, if you think Jones is off and he's crazy, he's conspiracy theorist, it can happen to anyone. It very likely at some point will happen to us on a platform. But yeah, on a personal level, I was like, well, hon, why would he say that I work with Ben Shapiro and that's why I'm not having him on? And yeah, I, sometimes those things. Well, if that I are, said that, I apologize. If I, I don't remember saying that, believe me, I don't remember half what I say. Well, I, and I, and I, I I'm not trying it. to lie at any level. I guess you're on the air, or maybe you're not on the air. Shapiro has his own thing, right? Shapiro has his own thing, yeah, with, with Daily, uh, Daily Wire. But and he's I'm not on jealous of Ben Shapiro. I, I, just don't, I just don't get like every headline, like the genius, the man, the myth, and like a pipe, like, oh. And then, and then and so you're right, you don't work with him. I'm not even against him. I just don't get Michael Savage with top ratings is taken off the air, and then all his radio stations are giving to Ben Shapiro. I, I have no idea. Like, I didn't even know he was on terrestrial radio, honestly. But Ben's been a longtime oh, yeah, friend of on. mine. He actually just, I, I met him uh, through Andrew Breitbart uh, when I was uh, writing there. When it used to be Big Hollywood, before it was called Breitbart Anything. And I actually had him negotiate some contracts for me just on an hourly basis because I said, hey, you're Jewish and conservative, and we've been friends. Um, but I've tried to avoid, I will say this, as sort of a philosophy. And a big part of this was Andrew Breitbart, actually. A conservative once attacked me uh, on YouTube about a video that I did in Detroit early on. And Andrew called that person up.
I don't even want to honor this person with airtime, so I don't want to get into the specifics of who it is, but someone can search this pretty quickly. Uh, I did a video on Detroit where I talked about bear sightings in Detroit. So I talked about the unemployment, how it's been run uh, by far leftists since 1961, really talked about how it's sort of this iconic model leftist city. And in there, there was a throwaway joke where I said it's gotten so bad that not only are there packs of wild dogs, which there are in Detroit, but there have been bear sightings. Now, the bear sightings have, I'm going to get to the point here, the bear sightings have only actually occurred outside of city limits, but very close to Detroit. So this person just rakes me over the coals and attacks me as a liar, you know, kind of went to this conspiracy route that I don't know who I was working for. And Andrew called her, uh, called her him, up, Z, <laughs> I almost slipped, uh, and said, listen, you don't attack other conservatives, certainly not if we're running on the same platform. At, did we lose uh, Alex? Yes, people watching right now, terrestrially, yep, we did have to cut, we just lost Skype. Uh, so Alex can confirm that this is not some conspiracy, we just lost a connection here. Uh, long story short, Andrew Breitbart called this person and said, listen, a rule of mine is you do not attack other conservatives, particularly if you haven't spoken with them in private and tried to work it out first. Um, and this person refused to retract it, and uh, this person was no longer welcome uh, contributing to any of Andrew's sites. So that's kind of been a, a defining Again, since I was just a comedian and actor and then kind of sat under the tutelage of Andrew as I came up in this movement more, you know, I think at 19, 20 years old, um, that's been a, a guiding rule for me. That's what I was, that's what I was kind of getting back to. Do you, do you think that if you could do it all over, that would be something that maybe you would give uh, greater importance Absolutely. to? Absolutely. You know, I've gotten where I, I have attacked some people. I used to actually follow that rule myself because I'm not a big infighter. And then when people don't stand up for you when you're under attack, you start attacking everybody. To let them see what it feels like because misery loves company. Right. But I've kind of, I've been trying to get back to my roots of not doing that. And, uh, you know, the truth is I find Ben Shapiro incredibly handsome. I've got a painting of him on my wall at, at my home. And I want to marry Ben <laughs> well, Shapiro. Well, you're getting out of so. Ben Shapiro, but like Ann Coulter used to really despise. And then you both kind of found yourself coming back in the same camp with Trump. Did, did you two ever meet? Was that ever awkward? Because you two had some really heated discussions. I did, I did run into her at the uh, RNC, and I did run into her at a few other events, and I've had her on a few times. And, I, and li listen, I get where she was coming from now, and I've moved. Here's the thing. I've, I, I used to almost be kind of liberal, then I moved more towards libertarian, and then I, this happens to most people. As I get older, I think more kind of conservative. Mm -hmm. So I used to kind of be a libertarian liberal, then kind of a libertarian, and then now a little bit more conservative in my views. So, yeah, uh, and, and and used to, I'd read Ann Coulter saying something. She wouldn't put satire at the end. So she'd go, the Japanese ought to really be thankful for Fukushima. That radiation is really good for you. And right. I'm like, you idiot. It's killing him. It was a joke, a sick joke. But I was taking it as literal. Now I get that a lot of what she does uh, is satirical. So I like I like Ann Coulter. Uh, I'm really envious of Ben Shapiro and obsessed with him. All right. And, uh, <laughs> no, 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 seriously. The point is, I don't want to fight with anybody. You're absolutely right. I think... You and I and Ben Shapiro, we should all. Well, I don't, listen, the only reason I brought up his name was because you said that I worked for him, and I'm just like I was just letting you know that was somewhat irritating because I had to f I had to feel like you with Bill Hicks, a bunch of comments going, no, I don't know where this is coming from. Um, let me ask you this though, uh, we do have to get going. If you want people to I'm know, you gotta get going. Alex Jones, for if you want people right now watching, they should know Alex Jones as what? What do you want to be known for? What do you want your legacy? to most be. You've been a controversial figure. Like you said, you've kind of transitioned from more liberal libertarian to where you are now. How would you want to be remembered or known? As somebody that wants to live in a free country and a free world who believes in humanity and who loves uh, private property and God, the Second Amendment, and, and, and who's a fan of Americana and who wants to see that continue and wants to defeat people like AOC and little vampire bat Kim Jong-un and the rest of it, and who just, uh, again, isn't going to back down the cultural Marxists and all these bullies. And that's that's who I am. It's what I stand for. And I believe in America. I bet on America. And I think America is coming back. But I think it's up to people like you and I and all your viewers and listeners who are the brain trust of this country. The people watching you right now are no doubt the most focused, most involved Americans on the planet. Yeah. Because there's Americans all over the world. And we really are special. We are uh, something special. There is something that is truly independent and exceptional about America. It's that idea. It's that spirit. It's why people want to come here. And so it's that spirit of America that I'm searching for. And I think I found it. And I'm just glad to be here with you. And anybody that wants to find out what I'm actually saying versus what mainstream media is obsessed with, and visit Infowars.com or Newswars.com. And Stephen, anytime you're not busy, which I know you're a hard worker, please come on my show. 
Yeah, well, I appreciate that. And uh, like I said, we wanted to be in South, at South by Southwest here this year, but uh, I've been banned along with every working member of my staff, as far as I know. So we'll have to find some other people. And it's it's been a weird spell there at uh, at South by Southwest. But all right, well, thank you. Infowars.com, Alex. Thank you for taking the time, man. I appreciate it. And heal up with uh, with your bicep there, brother. Don't go crazy. Don't taking off the cast, but don't go crazy doing preacher curls at the gym or anything. Don't worry, I won't, Hair Crowder. Man.